In this problem, we're trying to find the minimum angle right before this ladder slips. So we have friction against the floor, but we have a smooth wall here, so we don't have to worry about having multiple friction forces in the problem. So as I start to put in all the forces that are acting in this problem, first, the wall can exert a force only perpendicular because it has no friction. So I'm going to call that the normal force exerted by the wall. And as I work here, so one of the major challenges of this problem is just getting in all the angles. There's a lot of trig that has to be done. And I immediately see that this angle must be theta. It has to be equal to this angle. If I remember correctly, those are called alternate interior angles. And then, of course, I have gravity pulling down on the center of mass. And then at the floor, well, we can get friction forces here because I have this static friction coefficient. And I'm assuming that the static friction is maxed out because we're at this sort of breakaway angle where we've gotten so low, this thing is about to slip out. The reason it's not slipping out to the left right now must be that the friction force is pointing to the right. So put that in, and that's my Fs. And again, that's maxed out, so it's going to be equal to mu s times the normal force exerted by the floor. And I didn't want to get these confused, so that's going to be Nf. And then here is the normal force. All right, so I'm going to start out with a torque analysis about the contact point with the floor. And the reason I'm choosing this is because it wipes out two of our forces. So there's two of the forces we don't have to think about in this torque analysis because they're attached right to the rotation axis. But I will have to find the clockwise torque exerted by gravity and the counterclockwise torque exerted by the normal force against the wall. And there's one angle that I still have to figure out. And I'm not going to go through the full justification of this again. But if you recall doing incline plane problems, we did this over and over again of saying this angle right here must be equal to the angle of incline. And so if I want the perpendicular component of mg, well, that's going to be an mg cosine of that angle theta. As for the normal force exerted by the wall, I can see that the perpendicular component would be given by the sine function. So the normal force times the sine of theta. And I'm going to put that in attached to the contact point there. So again, it's perpendicular to the stick. It's the component that's perpendicular. And that would exert a torque through the entire length of the stick. Now, we weren't given the mass of this thing, and we weren't given the length. And I would assume that those things cancel out. So I'm just going to call them M and L for now. And let's get into our torque analysis. This thing is in static equilibrium, so the sum of all the torques must be zero. In other words, the clockwise torques have to cancel the counterclockwise torques. And I have mg cosine theta exerted through a lever arm of L over 2. That's the clockwise stuff. And then I have the normal force exerted by the wall times the sine of theta exerted through the entire length of this thing. So there's one useful equation. So what am I going to do next? You could opt to analyze torques. Um, and when I first looked at this problem, I almost did it. And then I said, wait a second, it's going to be a lot easier if I just look at the forces in the horizontal and vertical directions. So I'm going to use this condition of equilibrium. The sum of the forces in the x direction must be 0. That means everything pointing to the right must be equal to the sum of everything pointing to the left. And I look at all my rightward pointing stuff, and there's my static friction force. And there's nothing else pointing to the right. There is one force pointing to the left, thankfully. If there wasn't, this thing couldn't be in equilibrium. And so there's my second useful equation. Finally, if I analyze the forces in the y direction, I get that mg pulling down has to be exactly equal to the normal force exerted by the floor pushing up. Those are the only vertical forces in the problem. So there's my third useful equation. So then I can attack this just with substitutions. I don't have to do anything fancy. I'm going to replace nf with mg in my second equation. And then I'm going to replace nw with that expression in the first equation. So all of that results in an equation that looks like this. mg cosine theta L over 2 equals mu s mg sine theta times L. And the Ls are going to cancel out. And the mgs are going to cancel out. And I would like to solve for sine theta over cosine theta here because that's the tangent and it's nicer than the cotangent. So I'm going to move all the other stuff to the left-hand side and I have 1 over 2 mu s. 
equals sine over cosine, which is tangent theta. And that means theta, the angle at which this thing is just about to break loose, is the inverse tangent of 1 over 2 mu s. So there's our general solution to the problem. And then I can find out specifically what angle this is when our static friction coefficient is 0.7. And when I crunch the numbers, I find that it's 35.5 degrees. So when you work a problem like this, I would encourage you to actually experiment physically. Uh, take a ruler or something and just lean it up against the wall and it'll just sit there. Go to a lower angle and a lower angle and a lower angle and eventually it's going to break loose and slip.